Chapter 33 Greatness of Udi In the last chapter, we described the greatness of the Guru. Now, in this chapter, we will describe the greatness of Udi. However, both are interlinked. The greatness of Udi is due to the spiritual grandeur of Baba. Preliminary Let us now bow before the great saints. Their merciful glances will destroy mountains of sins and do away with all the blemishes of our character. Their talk gives us good teachings and confers on us invaluable happiness. Their minds do not know any difference, such as this is ours and that is yours. Such differentiation never arises in their minds. Their depths will never be repaired by us in this birth as well as in many future births. Udi It is well known that Baba took Dakshina from all and out of the amount thus collected, he spent on charity and purchased fuel. This fuel he put in the dhuni, the sacred fire which he kept even burning. The ash from the fire was called Udi and it was freely distributed to the devotees at the time of their departure from Shirdi. What did Baba teach us by this Udi? Baba taught by this Udi that all the visible phenomena in the universe are as transient as this ash. Our body is composed of matter of the five elements, will fall down after all the enjoyments are over and be reduced to the ashes. In order to remind the devotees of the fact that their bodies will be reduced to ashes, Baba distributed Udi to them. Baba also taught by the Udi that the Brahma is the only reality and the universe is ephemeral and that no one in this world, be he son, father or wife, is really ours. We came here alone and we have to go from here alone only. It has been found that the Udi cured many physical and mental maladies but Baba wanted to repeat into the devotee's ears the principle of discrimination between the unreal and the real. He taught non-attachment for the unreal by his Udi and Dakshina. The Udi taught us discrimination and the Dakshina taught us non-attachment. Unless we have do these things, it is not possible for us to cross over the sea of the mundane existence. So Baba asked for Dakshina and while the devotees took leave, he gave Udi as a prasad. Besmerized some of it on their foreheads and placed his boon conferring hand on them. When Baba was in a cheerful mood, he used to sing merrily. One such song was about Udi. The meaning of the song was, O playful Ram, come, come, and bring with you sacks of Udi. Baba used to sing in a very clear and tender tones. So, besides the spiritual implication of Udi, it had also its material significance. It conferred health, prosperity, freedom from anxiety and many other worldly gains. So the Udi has helped us to gain both our ends, material as well as spiritual. We shall now begin with the stories about the Udi. Scorpion Sting Narayan Mutiram Jani of Nashik was a devotee of Baba. He was serving under another devotee of Baba by name Ramachandra Vaman Modak. Once he went to Shirdi with his mother and saw Baba. Then Baba himself told her that her son should start independent business. Some days after his prophecy turned true, Narayan Jani left service and started a boarding house, Anandashram, which thrived well. Once a friend of his Narayan Rao was stung by a scorpion and the pain caused by it was severe and unbearable. Udi is most efficacious in such cases. It is to be applied on the point of pain and so Narayan Rao searched for it but found none. Then he stood before Baba's picture and invoked Baba's aid, chanted Baba's name and taking out a pinch of the ashes of the jaws stick, burning in front of Baba's picture and thinking it as Baba's Udi applied it on the seat of pain and on the sting 
As soon as he moved his fingers, the pain vanished and both the persons were moved and felt delighted. Bubonic Plague Case Once a devotee in Bandra came to know that the daughter who was staying in another place was down with bubonic plague. He had no Udi with him, so he sent the word to Nana Sahib Chandurkar to send the same. Nana Sahib got his message and route Thana Railway Station when he was travelling with his wife to Kalyan. He had no Udi with him then. He therefore took up some dust from the road, meditated upon Sai Baba, invoked his aid and applied it to his wife's forehead. The devotee was very glad to learn that his daughter, who was suffering for three days, began to improve from the very moment Nana Sahib invoked Baba's aid near the Thana railway station. Narayan Rao Bhakta Narayan Rao had the good fortune to see Baba twice during the latter's lifetime. Three years after the passing away of Baba in 1918, he wanted to come to Shirdi but could not. Within a year of Baba's Mahasamadhi, he fell sick and suffered much. All possible remedies gave to him no relief. So he meditated on Baba day and night. One night he had a vision. Baba came through a cellar comforted him saying, Don't be anxious. You will be improving from tomorrow and within a week you will be on your legs. Narayan Rao got perfectly well within the time indicating in the vision. Now the point for consideration is this. Was Baba living because he had the body or was he dead because he left it? No, Baba is ever alive for her. He transcends both life and death. He who loved him wholeheartedly gets a response from him at any time and at any place. He is always by her side and will take any form, appear before the devout bhakta and satisfy him. Appa Sahib Kulkarni In 1917, Appa Sahib Kulkarni was transferred to Thana and began to worship Baba's picture presented to him by Bala Sahib Bhate. In real earnest, he did the worship. He offered flowers, sandal paste and naivedya daily to Baba in the picture and logged intentionally to see him. In this connection, it may be remarked that seeing Baba's picture earnestly is equivalent seeing him in person. The following story illustrates this statement. Bala Bua Sutar A saint of Mumbai named Bala Bua Sutar, who on account of his piti, devotion and style was called Modern Dukaram, came to Shirdi for the first time in 1917. When he bowed before Baba, the letter said, I have known this man for four years. Balabua was wondered and thought how could that be as that was the first trip to Shirdi. But thinking about it seriously, he recollected that he had prostrated himself four years ago before Baba's portrait at Mumbai and was convinced about the significance of Baba's words. He said to himself, how omniscient and all pervadive are the saints and how kind are they to their devotees. I merrily bowed to his photo but this fact was noticed by Baba and in due time he made me realize that seeing his photo is equivalent to seeing him in person. Now we return to Appa Sahib's story. While he was in Thana, he had to go to Tor Bhivandi and was expected to return after a week. In this absence, the following wonderful thing took place on the third day. At noon, a fakir turned up at Appa Sahib's house. His features resembled exactly those of Baba's photo. Mrs. Kulkarni and the children all asked him whether he was Sai Baba or Shirdi. He said no, but that he was an obedient servant of his and came there at his order to inquire about the well-being of the family. Then. He asked for Dakshina. The lady gave him a rupee. He gave her a small packet of Udi and asked her to keep this in the shrine. Then he left the house and went away. Now hear the wonderful Leela of Sai. Appa Sahib could not proceed with his tour 
as his horse fell sick at Bhivandi. He returned home after that afternoon and learned from his wife about the fakir's visit. He got very restless as he did not have the darshan of the fakir. Moreover, he did not like that only one rupee was paid to him as dakshina. He said that had he been present, he would have paid not less than 10 rupees. Then he immediately started in quest of the fakir and searched for him in the masjid and other places without taking any food. He searched him was in vain. He then returned home and took his food. The readers may remember here Baba's dictum in chapter 32 that God's quest should not be made on an empty belly. Then after meals, he went out for a walk with a friend. Mr. Chitre, after going some distance, they saw a man approaching them rapidly. Appa Sahib thought that he must be the fakir that came to his house at noon, as his features tallied with those of Baba in the photo. The fakir immediately put forth his hand and asked for Dakshina. Appa Sahib gave him a rupee. He demanded again and again. So Appa Sahib gave him two more. Still he was not satisfied. Then he borrowed rupees three from Mr. Chitre and gave them to him. He wanted still more. Appa Sahib asked him to accompany him to his home. Then they all returned home and Appa Sahib gave him three more rupees in all nine. He looked unsatisfied and demanded again. Then Appa Sahib told him that he had a currency note of rupees ten. Fakir asked for the same, took it and returned the nine rupees and went away. Appa Sahib had earlier said that he would pay ten rupees and that the sum was taken from him and nine rupees consecrated by Baba's touch were returned to him. The figure nine is significant. It denotes the nine types of devotion. It may also be noted here that Baba gave nine coins to one Lakshmi by Shinde at his last moment. Appa Sahib examined the Udi packet and found that it contained some flowers, leaves and akshat. Then some time afterwards he got a hair from Baba when he saw him at Shirdi. He put the Udi packet and the hair in a tabis and wore it always on his arm. Appa Sahib realized the power of the Udi. Though he was a very efficient, he got rupees 40 as pay in the beginning. But after he rescued Baba's photo, and his Udi, he got many times more and also got much power and fluence and along with these temporal benefits, his spiritual progress was also rapid. So those who are fortunate enough to get Baba's Udi should, after bath, apply it on the forehead and take some of it mixed with water as holy tirth. Haribhau Karnik In 1917, Haribhau Karnik of Dahanu came to Shirdi on the Guru Purnima day and worshipped Baba with all the formalities. He offered clothes and Dakshina and after taking Baba's leave got down the steps of the Masjid. Then he thought that he should offer one more rupee to Baba and was just turning to climb up again when Shama signalled him to gesture that as he had got Baba's leave he should go and not return. So he started for home. On his way, when he went to the temple of Kalaram, Nasik for Darshan, the saint Narsingh Maharaj, who used to sit inside the temple, came to Haribhau, caught him by his wrist and said, Give me one rupee. Karnik was surprised. He paid the rupee most willingly and thought that Sai Baba recovered the rupee which he intended in his mind to give through Saint Narsingh Maharaj. This story illustrates the fact that all saints are one and illustrates how they 